Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got whizzing around in front of me here is one of the Wasteland trucks from Anvil Industry. Now this recently went out as a loyalty reward to their Patreon scheme if you were subscribed for a certain three months, uh, but it is also available through My Mini Factory. They have also mentioned that they might be doing some of these things as kits. Uh, now they did eventually go back and do the Diesel Punk mech kit as a, as a physical release. So if you do want to see this one happen, you want to get your hands on it and you don't have a printer, make sure and get in touch, let them know because it does help them spot whether or not you know, it's worth putting the molds together. Now this has a bazillion different options. It was really fun to print to begin with. As you can see, I have painted it quite simply. Uh, the idea is that today it is super hot, so I wanted something where it didn't matter too much if my paint got a little tacky and gross. And the end result, I still think, is pretty cool. Um, I'd definitely put that on the table, maybe for some really, really big gas lands. <laughs> Anyhow, all of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below. Same as always, let's get started. So first off, excuse the glove. I just don't want to get brown paint all over my hand in a couple of minutes. But first of all, I want to look at the actual miniature itself. You'll notice straight away the driver and passenger aren't in there. But I want to highlight just how much thought goes into Anvil's big kits like this being printer friendly. There is practically nothing in there, and that sounds like a really weird way to complement these kits. But they use, I mean, for a, a 156 or thereabouts scale truck to use practically no resin is really impressive. Uh, it all just comes straight off the thing. The supports are really easy to remove. It's a brilliant little kit. I was really surprised at just how easy it was to get this off the machine. So I have primed this thing in matte black from the Army Painter. It's not going to matter at all which black primer you use. Um, you could even prime it brown if you wanted to. I want a little bit of depth for what I'm going to do. And you'll see here I'm getting out some paint. This is flat brown from Vallejo onto the most sophisticated palette you'll ever see. I recently bought some headphones and it has a nice glossy surface. Glossy cardboard is about one of the most useful bits of garbage that <laughs> you'll have going. So load up a big brush and I'm just going to quite generously start overbrushing the entire miniature. Uh, I'll pass some of the flat areas a couple of times to build up that brown. And I am also going to do this over the crew and the wheels and underneath as well. Uh, you'll see some parts I haven't bothered too much with the priming, and because we're never going to see them, I'm honestly not all that concerned. Um, it is interesting though, I would really like to see what somebody maybe a little more patient and more talented than I am would do with this kit, because I think if you busted out um, some slightly more advanced techniques, maybe even an airbrush, you know, I'd love to see somebody with a bit of talent tackle one of these, let's say. <laughs> Anyhow, oop, I know that'll be fine. Now, over the whole miniature with this mid-tone brown. Now, doesn't that look appetizing? You'll see in the background that I've also done that to the crew. Uh, don't worry about any little black bits in the recesses. Really, that's what I'm looking for. But what we're going to do now is lay down the rusty effect at the heart of this metalwork. So I have here orange brown from Vallejo. And that you could as easily do this with something like Mournfang Brown and then Scrag Brown from uh, Citadel. We just want to now stipple really roughly some orange onto pretty much the whole thing. Uh, pay attention to the metal work on this one. But feel free to go as nuts with this as you like. But I want a rough texture to it so that when we paint this color, you know, the body color over the top, we're going to get a really uneven, battered finish. So instead of dry brushing this on, stipple it on. I haven't even cleaned my brush. I'm just really painting as I go here. Now when it comes to preparing the crew, I realize I've skipped a little bit here. Uh, but what I'm doing is just quite generously still hitting them with some dark sand. Uh, starting at the top and trying to keep my brush moving downwards on the model. Uh, as you see, I'm still using... Nasty cheap brushes. We're not doing anything particularly taxing here. I want to leave just a little bit of the darker brown in the recesses here and give this guy a proper, dusty, almost chalky finish. 
So here's our driver, and it is important to note that when you are doing these stages, to leave about five or six minutes between each layer that you're dry brushing, uh, if you don't, what you're going to find is that the repeated pressure in a, in a same place over and over again is going to break through and lift off the color underneath. And you're going to end up going back to primer in really weird places. So let each stage of this dry thoroughly. Finishing touch for these guys is going to be some off-white. Again, this is a Vallejo color, and we're going to dry brush this a little bit more typically. Getting some of it off on a bit of kitchen towel, and then lightening them up. Now I'm still going to be fairly generous with this, concentrating on the upper areas of the miniatures. I'm not too fussed if their legs and boots stay a little bit dark, for example. Now that's pretty much perfect. Now I'm going to put the crew aside for now. Those of you who are familiar with it are probably going to guess where I'm going with this. We are going to slap chop the dickens out of these crew because I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on them, but I want them to look relatively all right. Using a series of browns to come up from rather than grey, as you might see in the original video, gives us a slightly warmer, I think more natural finish. So that's why I've started everything brown in the same way. But we'll pop this fella aside and get back to the truck. Now I've been agonizing about what color to actually paint the bodywork, because Mrs. Sledge, she makes fun of me because apparently I paint everything red when I don't, and I love you darling, that's a terrible impression of you. <laughs> the other thing to bear in mind is the last time I did a big uh, anvil kit, I painted it in blue, so I don't want to paint this one blue. You see how I'm struggling here. What I've got is green sky from Vallejo, and it is a beautiful color, but I've almost never got an excuse to use it on anything. That changes today. I've got one of my makeup brushes with a slightly rounded tip, and that's going to help me quite a bit here, because I am going to... Yeah, dude, stipple this on, uh, leaving a little rough edge where some of that rusty nonsense wants to be. So I don't need to be terribly careful with this, but at areas where I want a little bit of the rust to show through, I can just slow down, not apply as much. Oh, that's a lovely green, though. Anyhow, I'm quite happy with myself now that I've got an excuse to use green sky. I'm going to paint this whole vehicle in some form or other using this color now. Now, like I said, isn't that a nice green? I'm going to move on now to the metallic details. Here I've got Army Painters Gunmetal, and I'm going to use, again, a rough little brush. Uh, something like the Citadel Small Dry Brush or similar will work well here. What I want to do is cover over most of the uh, metallic stuff with this. But anywhere that there is like a gap between two areas, I want to try and leave just a little bit of that grimy brown and black uh, as a almost a border. Um, anywhere that it's not possible, I'm not too worried. I'll just cover over traditionally. But for stuff like this, you see, we're just smashing it on. On the exhaust, now I am going to come back and brighten this up with something later. But likewise, just a little bit of brown at the edges is not going to hurt us any. But yeah, away I go. I'm now going to cover over all of the metal work with some gunmetal. Now we can start cleaning up some of these details. And at last I'm moving to, as it were, an ordinary brush. I'm actually using an old medium shade brush uh, because it still keeps a pretty good tip. And it's going to work perfectly well for what I want to do here. I'm using German Grey from Vallejo. Uh, reason being, this is a very dark blue-black, so it works perfectly well for rubberized stuff, uh, mass-produced sort of plastic finishes, so the bumpers I'm going to do this, and as well, under a shade, it's going to work well for the browning up here. So, finally, we're going to tidy this up too. Now there are a couple of little bits of what looks like 100 mile an hour tape, or duct tape, which are holding on this thing here. Uh, what I'm using is Viking Blue from the Army Painter, because what I'm looking for is that electrical tape blue. So Calador Sky or similar might be close to this, uh, but that's going to be perfect. There are a couple of bits that I want to brighten up a bit more than the metallics I've already done. So I'm going straight up to Shining Silver, and this is going to be really bright. Uh, but let's just jab it on these little chrome details. And I'm also going to paint around the edges of the uh, lights at the front here 
because if I end up going on into the light in the center, it does not matter one jot. Then for the lights themselves, I am going to use light C gray on the white bits, and I'm going to quickly blast over with some flat red on the red ones at the back, and a little bit of orange red on the indicators. I'm going to base coat this skull at the front here in dark sand from earlier. Now if your crew stole this skull from a spirit Halloween, you can leave it like that. But remember, horns are not the same color as bone. So I have here some tan earth. I might have thinned this down just a little bit too much, but we'll apply that over the antlers. Now ordinarily here is where I'd say to do any cleanup that you need to, uh, but honestly, yeah, don't worry too much about it because we are really going to continue battering this for a little while. What I've got here is a mix. This is half and half Strong Tone from the Army Painter and Lamian Medium from Games Workshop. Now I'm using that medium rather than the Army Painter one because I want it to break up the surface tension a little bit and uh, help this flow a little more in comparison to the Army Painter one which maintains the slightly sticky consistency of the shade. Um, Really, you could even use water for this, but I do quite like how Lamian Medium will let it retain some of that clingy consistency. Uh, so, I'm keeping my brush moving in the same direction as much as I can. That'll sort of help with tide marks and what have you. And try working in sections. So you'll see I'm completing layering this over the front part first. I'll probably give this a couple of minutes to dry it, then flick it round Actually, hang on. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's grip it by the uh, central column. And now I can paint the whole thing. But work in sections, you will find it easier. Let's shade the entire miniature. The one exception is going to be the gunner himself. I don't want to shade him if I can avoid it. Now once that's dried, we've got plenty of grime and depth on our vehicle. Um, I'm actually quite pleased with how that's turned out. You'll see as well that by thinning it with a medium, uh, we don't get quite the same amount of shininess that you might do off of the Army Painter stuff when it dries. Obviously, if you're going to matte varnish that miniature, it's not a problem, uh, but I do like mitigating it with a little bit of Lamia Medium first. Now, I've got in my hand here a little bit of packing foam, which I've torn to bits, and some German Camo Black Brown, which, aside from having a very long name, is a great color to dab a little bit into this uh, what do you call it, into this foam and start dabbing it at the corners and edges of the vehicle where you want a little bit of chipping. Now it's very easy to go overboard with this. Um, even in the post-apocalypse I figure there's going to be more paint on some of these cars than we might see. Uh, people do take care of their vehicles after all, but it's a good way to break up, especially around bullet holes and what have you, uh, without having to you know, spend a lot of time adding more color to the miniature. So just a little bit of this, particularly places where people are going to stand or put their hands uh, climbing over the back of the, the vehicle, for example, here. Let's just dab a little bit more on here. Yeah, as much as this as you want. Now comes what is genuinely one of my favorite parts. I've got here a dot of red leather, which is from Vallejo. And I've mixed it with about 10 dots of water. Um, that will give us quite a grimy little mix. Uh, but what I'm going to do is concentrate on areas where I want fresh rust to have collected. So particularly in areas where metalwork meets the bodywork, uh, that's always a, a good candidate for this. Uh, you can experiment with the mix. Like if you want a more prominent rusty effect, then what I'd suggest would be try it like this first. And then try it again, adding a little less water, or add in a touch more paint. Uh, this is a great way to add a little bit of warmth to a color scheme where I have been mucking around with it a wee bit. And particularly on areas like that, lay some down and then just boop it with your fingertip to spread it out a little. Um, chipped areas, dab it, boop it. Very scientific method, dab it, boop it. <laughs> When this dries, it will look a little less extreme. So it can take a bit of practice getting a feel for how much you really want to add and how thin you want it to be, but don't be afraid of it. And uh, particularly on these apocalyptic style miniatures, 
you know, this is where to have some fun really experimenting. Now, I did mention it being pretty easy to go overboard, and uh, I think I might have done, but I don't care. It looks cool. <laughs> so we do need to do just a couple last uh, highlights to really make this thing sing. So I have some shining silver, same as from before, and one of these small dry brushes. I really like the wedge tip on these army painter brushes, eh? I'm going to lightly just catch the edges of the MG first of all. Uh, then I'm going to add a little bit more to my brush, and I am going to go back and do this over the uh, shining metal parts. So bits like here, the engine and what have you. But yeah, you can be quite sparing with this. It's really a matter of personal taste at this point. Now the final stage at this point is going to be to add a little bit of dust. Now you can either use a dust filter, I know Tamiya and Vallejo sell those in little bottles, or you can dry brush on a dusty effect over the top. That's what I'm going to do. I've got my dark sand again, and a very, very soft makeup brush, and I've gotten most of my paint out already. What I'm going to do is lightly dry brush on the underside of the vehicle in just a couple of spots to see how much I'm going to leave behind. And I want, I want nothing. I want a whisper of dust. So rather than strictly dry brushing it, I am going to quite softly almost stipple this on. Um, I want my bristles to spread out as I'm tapping it on, and I want an even sort of dusty patina as I'm going. Now try to avoid the silver bits, you know, things like the engine, the exhaust, and what have you, because those are not likely to sit still long enough to gather dust. Uh, but places like the wheels, you can be a little bit more generous. So add as much or as little of this as you like, and just remember which parts of the vehicle are likely to be important to its crew. What are they going to keep running and clean? And the rest, cover it in muck. And once I'm finished with this, what I'm going to do is quite quickly off screen, you'll probably see them lurking in the background there, uh, the crew I have started painting. And honestly, I've just smashed with some, some contrast that I had to hand. Don't worry too much about the actual colors. Pick whatever you like the look of, you know, racing team finish or what have you. Oop, throw it violently to the floor. But yeah, let's get a look at this once I am all finished. And there at last, our wasteland truck is complete. Now, I would probably paint the gunner separately next time as well, the same way that I did the crew. And while the crew themselves, I'm quite happy with the result of them just being painted very quickly and smashed in there. I think the gunner I could probably have spent a little bit more time on. In the future, that would definitely be something I'd want to do. But given how hot it is, I'm honestly just pleased to have this finished. It was really a lot of fun. And the, the paint itself being a little more difficult to work with didn't matter in the heat. Ultimately, that's a done model. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, and in this case, resin including all of my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much for your support. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.